flight attendant is trained to handle anything, from the routine... Check to see that your seatbelt is securely fastened... ...to the terrifying... And when that happens, training saves lives. They call it boot camp, and we are, I mean, merciless. I might feel like a huge failure if I do get sent home today. Before any flight attendant takes off, she must be prepared for the possibilities no one likes to think about. Because keeping passengers comfortable is easy. Keeping them safe, that's the hard part. The preparation begins at flight attendant school. In this episode of Flight Attendant School. They don't want to get to class when we're supposed to get to class. If we're supposed to leave at 7, they want to go to 7.15. I'm ready. They're laughing, they're giggling. I'm hearing it all. Suzette, you seem really irritated. People in the house have treated me like I don't belong. Flight attendant school now begins its second week. Eight of the trainees are sharing a house to be closer to school and to help their studies. But Suzette isn't adjusting well to life with roommates. My name is Suzette and I'm from Castle Rock, Colorado. Living with a house with seven other people, I've done that before. I've had five children, raised them. Um, it had to run smoothly at our house and that's how things go. I'm used to respect from younger children. Um, my kids were very good with, with being respectful. That's one of the things that they were taught, and times have changed. I mean, that's how life goes. Uh, the towels are dry. There's a lot of inconsideracy going on, and I want to tell them all off. You're kidding me. No. I guess you know, we all got, got through without a problem. Well, you know, I, I took the first shower, but I had to turn it on all the way to huh? get hot, which yesterday I didn't. I think Suzette seemed really irritated and bitter, and, and I don't know how she was feeling, but that's what it, what it was. That's how it felt to me. How come it's all just water? The coffee's in it, but it wasn't run through. <sighs> I don't know how it works, so you'll have to fix it. It's only water? Yeah. But she was stressed out, and in a bad mood, you know, a little bit. But when you're in that mood, you're going to notice when, you know, the littlest things people do. I probably filled it with water and turned it on and set it in here. I'm good at doing that. At school, the trainees must put aside their domestic issues and focus on the day's emergency evacuation material. They know that nothing should distract them from their life-saving training. This is the second week of the six-week training program for our initial flight attendant training. This is the week in which the students will be learning about the big time stuff on an airplane. Okay, so today we're gonna to continue on with the Airbus, and Sherry's gonna teach you all about the doors today. Oh, and then we'll go to the airport, play on the aircraft, and that should cement everything in and be ready for next test. The class moves to Frontier's Airbus 319 training cabin to prove that they're capable of operating the exit door. This morning we're doing door drills. Um, if students do not pass the door drill today, they will be released from the program. Just rotate the lever upward. Going into the door exercise, um, it's, a, it's a little bit nerve-wracking because they really are intense about the slides. It's very important that you know how to open the door. You know, if there's an evacuation and you haven't armed your door right, there's no, you open the door, there's no slide. That's a big deal. It's okay to stay over here. All right, so pull the pin so the white light will light up. And this door is going to do one of these. What do I always need to do is the backup, pull my manual inflation. And that's our simulated. Oh. <laughs> so my slide is going to be right here. Single lane. Oh. I would say that I am really nervous. It's just the performance anxiety with, you know, your instructors watching you. The door's closed. Now we're ready to arm. I think Katrina mostly blacked out and forgot a few steps, and that's just human nature. Oh, oh your slide didn't inflate. Your slide 
myself today. I, I was really nervous and I didn't do it as well as I would like, but I did a good job. I give myself an A for effort. We do this exercise because it will save lives. We try to break it up a little bit by making them laugh and smile and, and have a good time. So they don't go home at the end of the day just beat up and stressed out. Come on, Chris. Good. Pull that hand off. Open. Everyone was proficient with door operation, but Heather and Katrina's stilted performances stood out to Sherry. She'll be watching them. You'll be arming and disarming a door. You'll be practicing your demo. Oh, we have a cell phone going on. William just broke an important rule. There can be no cell phones in use on the job or during class. You get to wear a life vest, and you get to wear it all day. It's better than actually yelling at someone or biting someone's head off. I mean, I would rather them taking my phone, but this is embarrassing. All right, lovely outfit. Everybody in the building will know what happened, too. The most humiliating thing they could have done to me. His cell phone did go off. Not a good thing. First time it happens, we're going to have some fun with it. The second time, we're going to have a little talk about it. A cell phone going off is, is, is disruptive to the class and to the instructor. Frank makes sure the trainees never forget the cell phone rule. Caution. Cell phone <laughs> in use may interrupt learning. Oh, <laughs> might, might have to stand up to this one. Chris taught me everything I know. Hey, we give out the life list for a reason. It's to remind you to turn the cell phone off. I do want to make sure William understands uh, the importance of following our, our policies here. <laughs> Next on Flight Attendant School. They don't want to get to class when we're supposed to get to class. Hurry up and wait, hurry up and wait. And I'm ready. The people in the house have treated me like I don't belong. Every flight begins with the oral safety demonstration. It alerts passengers to the emergency exits in case of evacuation. It has to become second nature for the flight attendant trainees. What's going to happen right now is I'm just going to introduce a little bit about the safety demonstration for you, stuff that you can start to practice, because eventually you will be having a practical test on this. Today we did the safety demonstration, just the introduction to it, just kind of the physical part of it. It takes some dexterity to do, so there's a lot of information that they'll be receiving for the first time as, as safety professionals. Full hand points here at Frontier. Don't make me get the oven mitts and the duct tape. Our aircraft is equipped with six emergency exits. There are six total. There are two door exits in the front. Two, one. <laughs> We need tape. Where's the tape? Oh, I I think I did pretty good with the hands. I kept my fingers together. So he didn't tape my hands like he taped Nicole's. So I think I did pretty good at demonstrating all this stuff. One. Face forward and back two. Good. They did awesome. They just jumped right in, and, and that's what, what a lot of training is about, because no one's good at this job right out of the chute. You have to practice, and what we try and do is encourage them to practice in class and not on a plane load of folks. So they kept up, they made their mistakes, they learned, and, and they're good. 
On the ride home from school, Suzette's beginning to annoy her housemates with her mothering attitude. Okay, we all have to designate a day that we're making breakfast. Uh, okay, then I have to make breakfast. <laughs> Mountains are the other way. Prior to going home, I tried to be a part of the group, but it just doesn't happen. We're gonna call um, Katrina Oprah because she has the Oprah line. Those, that's my people, she says. <laughs> Oprah lines? Yeah, Oprah said what? that. Oprah lines. Yes. What does that mean? Oprah, Oprah's like lines? lines. No, lines. Her lines, oh. she says in oh. her show. I was in the back of the van, and I say something. The look is, it. I don't do that well. I don't have children that do that to me. Okay. So if we're driving every day from the house, you all know that when we have to be here at eight o'clock, we will be here at seven thirty. Yes. Children? The earlier the better. Are we all set with this, children? Yes. From day one, she made herself into be the mom. Suzette was not my mom, so I never really got into that. The trainees are getting in the habit of looking their best so they can meet Frontier's grooming standards. But Suzette's concerned that her housemates are taking too long to get ready. Knowing they'll be fired for tardiness, she wants to get to school on time. They don't want to get to class when we're supposed to get to class. If we're supposed to leave at 7, they want to go at 7.15 and go to Starbucks. I'm a point A to point B person. When you're told to be somewhere at some time, I'm there half an hour early. This is a daily routine for me. I'm used to it. They could have their bathroom time because I know they all do the makeup thing and I don't. Hurry up and wait, hurry up and wait. Suzette, you seemed really irritated and bitter and pulled away from the group. She started kind of copying an attitude towards all of us. I know aviation regulation. I think she has a very strong personality and sometimes she can be overbearing. People in the house have treated me like I don't belong. Fine. I'm ready. And I'm ready. Go time. Go time. Next on Flight Attendant School. It's a lot of information. It's a lot of different safety features on the plane that we need to know. You need to pass this Airbus exam tomorrow morning. I'm in that f***ing class today. I was ready to drop out. Today's classroom is on Denver Airport's tarmac. It's the first time the students will be touring an Airbus 319. Do you remember what this panel is right here? All right, other than Annie. This first look will give the students practical knowledge of the aircraft's safety features, which will help them on their test and in the air. It's a lot of information. It's the safety equipment, and we. A lot of different safety features on the plane that we need to know. We need to get this one some muscles. <laughs> come on. Now there we go. It'll come in. Um, any question? Is there like a button that you push to land? Oh. It's a lot of information, but if you can uh, break it down and you know not not let it overwhelm you, but you gotta take everything in stride. The waist. Perfect. Okay, I think we're done. Right. In the event of a water evacuation, most of the cushion is designed for flotation. <laughs> the cushion it was really cool just to be in there and be like, I am gonna be a flight attendant. This is gonna be me in here. Seeing everything and being able to be hands-on with it, touch it, feel it. I feel like I am a hands-on learner. If I can experience I I will remember it a lot better. The tour is done and the students have to retain everything they learned about the aircraft safety systems for their next exam. Your first priority should be to pass this Airbus exam tomorrow morning. Okay, go home, study, study, study. Worried they haven't prepared well enough for tomorrow's exam, Katrina, William, and Stacy study late. Um, I take the studying very seriously. I haven't been in school in a long time, so it's it's harder for me to get back in the routine of making things stick in my brain. Where is the double jump seat located? Double the forward, jump. the forward, ga forward galley, it and it faces the aft. You are a liar. I don't know this stuff. I don't know I this don't stuff. I don't know all you this stuff. You made me feel sorry for you. I don't know it. <laughs> she likes kidding. After that class today, I was ready to drop out. 
seeing Katrina dissing herself is pretty depressing in a sense because we all are in the house know she can do it, just like I believe everybody else in the house can do it. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get through the lecture. What are you talking about? I can't be a nervous wreck and not have any sleep and not have any downtime. I need some peace and quiet to study and some time to get things done. I didn't even know. <laughs> I've learned to treat people the way I want to be treated, and they need to learn it. Coming up on Flight Attendant School. I informed my roommates that I was leaving. Can I help you? No, that's OK. If she doesn't want it, don't do it to her. Get me out of here. Arriving at school, the trainees are worried about passing today's aircraft safety exam, and that Suzette's unhappy about being kept up all night. Yeah. Suzette seems a little disturbed today. I yeah. don't know if she just didn't get enough sleep last night, or the fact that uh, Katrina and Stacy and I were studying last night. So I went up and started to study a little bit and went to bed, and then, you know, the chairs are scooting back and forth, they're laughing, they're giggling. The ones in the room next to me were studying together, which is fine, but I'm hearing it all. I'm not getting my own studying done like I'd like to. Everybody was up to like 12.30 when I went to bed at 9. I have to go with my health, too. I've been eating antacids like crazy. Oh, my God. I'm exhausted. I need sleep. Good morning, everybody. All right, this is an 80-point test, 80 questions. Let's get started. Trainees can only fail and retake one test during the program. If they fail more than one exam, they'll be asked to leave. I was one of the last to finish my test today, but it's because I have, you know, it's my test anxiety again, and every question, I read it, answered it, and then read it again. Grading the exams, the instructors discover that one student has failed, Suzette. We need to look up and see if she has a retake. Did okay, she? I will. And we need to I don't just think regrade she does. it, please. I, I, I'm almost positive she doesn't. Well, we, need, yeah. we have to check. You got No. No retake. She I, I yeah, I didn't think so. Sherry and I can sit down and go over the one that she missed to make sure that uh, Suzette understands and is ready for tomorrow's retake. Susan? Just as past, so I'm assuming I got a great job. Yay! Katrina had a lot of self-doubt, and when she passed the test, she did 100% on it, so it showed that she knew her material, and all she had to do was believe in herself to pass it. I believe I could have passed it if I wouldn't have been in the house. When I did see the test and saw that I failed it, by then, I was extremely agitated. Lunches can never be long enough, the days can never be short enough, and you can never get enough sleep. When you're a flight attendant, you may be working 14 hours nonstop. So good job, you guys. Overall, you guys did really good. You really need to give yourself a round of applause. Her future in the program at stake. Suzette decides she has to make a change. On my way home from training tonight, I let the housemates know that I'm going home because I didn't, no longer wanted to stay here. I don't get any sleep. They stay up all hours of the night at school. My prayer is to be a flight attendant and I need to focus on that. Oh. Do you want me to start crowding? Yeah, just grab them. It doesn't matter. Last night, I know we were getting loud, but you know, she had such a problem with it, but she didn't come down and say anything. I think it's definitely a good thing that Suzette did move out. I think it would be easier on the house to have someone more around our own age. <laughs> I know it hurts. I do the whole. <laughs> I've been very quiet, and I understand I'm older than them, and I'm here to be a flight attendant. That is my goal. If I stayed here, I don't think I would succeed. Can I help you? No, that's okay. Are you sure? Yep. If she doesn't want it, don't give it to her. Suzette was the only one who didn't pass the last test, but it's her responsibility to study. Like, we had two days to study for that test. 
One of the days she chose not to study, she said, oh, I'll just get up early and study tomorrow. You know, and that, that's on her. I tried to say I would help her. Get me out of here. <laughs> okay, I feel this way. If leaving the house is what makes her happy, then I'm glad that she left the house. Okay. I just don't appreciate the way she went about it. No, I totally agree. She bailed out for selfish reasons. Um, and it's like, you can't, when you're on a trip, you don't get mad and I want to go home, you know? <laughs> I don't like you. I'm taking my toys and going home. You can't do that on a plane. We need to work as yeah. a team. It's... And that's something that the instructors have told us over and over. on the next episode of Flight Attendant School. She's gonna be doing the laugh truck. Well, you got one that's a store. Oh, Whew. Running out of time. Okay. I'd rather deal with people than bags because that's tough work. We're gonna to go to a challenge course. Oh, gosh. <laughs> yeah, you did, yeah. It's windy up here. Good, William. I can't believe it. A flight attendant is trained to handle anything, from the routine... Check to see that your seatbelt is securely fastened. ...to the terrifying. Open the seatbelt! Get up! And when that happens, training saves lives. They call it boot camp, and we are, I mean, merciless. I'm gonna feel like a huge failure if I do get sent home today. Before any flight attendant takes off, she must be prepared for the possibilities no one likes to think about. Because keeping passengers comfortable is easy. Keeping them safe, that's the hard part. The preparation begins at Flight Attendant School. In this episode of Flight Attendant School. You're gonna walk in the shoes of some of your fellow employees. I'm like out of breath. Well, I'd rather deal with people than bags because that's tough work. We're gonna go to a challenge course. All right, go fly! I don't want to. Flight attendant trainees are ready for another day in the classroom learning emergency procedures. But top instructors Frank and Pam have planned a long day at the airport for them. All right, you're going to walk in the shoes of, of some of your fellow employees. The Walk a Mile in My Shoes program is really a way for our flight attendant students to learn uh, what some of the other roles are in the operation by actually physically doing other jobs here at Frontier. This is a great opportunity, you guys. How many of you have ever wanted to park an Airbus? Hello, hello. As she faces her next training challenge, Annie wants to show her instructors she'll do whatever it takes to succeed at Frontier so she can follow in her family's footsteps. I feel some extra pressure because my mom is a first officer, but she also works around the ground office a lot as well. I'm not sure if the instructors expect more from me because my mom is a pilot and around here, but. I'm sure that they'll notice if I don't do very well. The trainees will perform some of the jobs that must be done before a flight takes to the air. While it is a day of general learning, like every exercise, their performances are evaluated. My name's Fred Bass. I'm uh, the manager on duty for passenger service. This is Trevor Lang. He's actually the manager on duty for our ramp. Your trainers told us that you were here to do a walk a mile. So what we're going to do is we're going to have you guys do some of the things that we do here at the airport. We're going to start out the ticket counter. You're going to get a little bit of ticket counter training, throw some bags. You're going to be working on the ramp, which means you're going to be throwing bags onto planes, pulling them off of planes. Down in the bag room where you actually pull them off of a uh, carousel and put them on the carts. So I guess we'll get going. I, I think the instructors prepare us very well for all the expectations. And if we fail, it's our own fault. OK, so you guys are just going to hang out at each end here. Okay and direct people to each open position. All right. So you want to ask her if she's going to Tulsa? Yes. This woman here? So you're going to Tulsa? Okay. 
And there you go. So you just rip that off there. And go ahead and grab her bag. And wheels up. Wheels up? Yep. Oh, whoops, there I just go. did one backwards. <laughs> yeah. My flight is at 12. I can't, I, I can't do anything with that. No, I'm just, I'm just directing traffic <laughs> and I'm training. We are kind of learning the ticket counter and how that works, so I'm just directing people to where they need to go. I think I'm helping, I hope I'm helping. Jeremy, this is stressful. It is stressful, isn't it? <laughs> You're asking me questions I don't know. Let's see here, Danielle Grocha. Grocha. Huh? Grocia. 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 That's Italian, right? Italian. Yeah. Italian. Italian. I worked at the ticket counter today. I actually got to do the job quite a bit because I was working with customer service training as well. Annie's on the ticket counter checking people in. The ticket counter is hard to work. There's so many questions and so many things that can go wrong. So Annie may have been a little stressed. I'm like out of <laughs> Coming up on flight attendant school. She's gonna be doing the laugh truck. Oh, got one that filler. Oh! <laughs> at Denver International Airport, the trainees are spending a day trying out different jobs at Frontier. Worn out from the ticket counter, Annie's now on the tarmac waiting for her next task. I'll do it. You'll do it? Yeah. I told you she'd volunteer. It's better be good. It's laugh. Oh, it's good. You're going to like it. Trust us. It's a laugh it's a truck. It's a great job. It's a laugh truck? The lav truck is the vehicle used by the Frontier ground crew to empty the airplane's lavatory tanks. Do I need these gloves? Yeah, you uh, know, well, you're going to no. get some rubber We're going to get you some rubber ones. All right. Those are for yeah, you. I guess I have to watch <laughs> Well, I guess I wasn't thinking of lav truck. I've never heard that term before. And then it kind of made sense walking to it. <laughs> Now you're armed and ready. For the lab truck today, we first met up with the man who usually has that job. We went up to the plane and had to configure the pipes in different ways. And there's one pipe that's the dirty pipe and one that's the clean one. Not to be confused. Oh, well, we got one that's the spill one. Did you guys rig this? That was sanitary blue juice. That was not from the lavatory. I had blue juice spill all over me, which is very clean, disinfectant. Apparently it was a runner. The runner just means that it was not completely latched all the way, so it starts spilling down, which is a great surprise for my first time. Meanwhile, up in the cargo hold, Heather is trying to impress the baggage handlers. Where's all of our bags? I know. Oh, look, here comes the, the strollers. How do we do these? Can you put it up here? Oh, wow. Heather. Ah! <laughs> Heather, have you stacked anything? Throw it in. Yeah! I'm working! Uh, <laughs> Maybe not. I don't think Heather had a problem with lifting the bags because she usually got another ramper. She flirted with them and they would easily put it up for her. She was just enjoying the day. Oh, Cliff, you lost this thingy. Okay, tighten that on. Okay. Now drop, drop your valve. There's nothing gonna, gonna happen this time. Trust me. <laughs> okay, now you want to take a couple of them. This big face to you. All the way left. Slide. Turn to the right. There you go. <laughs> you get to know everybody personally. <laughs> Wait, I don't want to know most people, okay? You get to know I'll everyone personally. <laughs> when stuff spilled on me, I was just thinking to get the heck out of there, is what I was thinking. <laughs> yeah, I don't think you want these in. No, I think they're good. <laughs> A few terminals down, Chris has joined up with the aircraft cleaning crew. We're responsible for cleaning the seats. We have to make sure that they're covered and ready to just sit into the aircraft when we go into the aircraft. We're responsible for cleaning the labs, a total of three labs. Now, in addition, we also are responsible for the pillars and the blankets. When a Frontier plane lands in Denver, it's only on the ground for 45 minutes, giving the cleaning crew just seven minutes to clean the entire airplane. 
As a former flight attendant for a smaller airline, Chris used to clean planes between flights. It's something he hoped he'd never have to do again. So we're going to clean the plane that just came in, do the lab, change any seat cushions that are gross. I have rubber gloves on because you never know what you're going to touch on the plane. Baby stuff, puke. Hopefully this plane isn't too dirty. Go, 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 go. The cleaning crew has just seven minutes to get the plane ready for another flight. Uh, what if you find headsets? If they're good, throw them more to the center right now. Up on top. You can put the good ones up on top, okay. the bad These ones throw them in the trash. The pillows, do you throw them where? Throw them right in the middle here. Okay. Gather them up at the end. My last job, we cleaned planes. There was just two of you cleaning the plane by yourself between every flight. I mean, there was no cleaning crews ever. It's a lot of pressure to have to clean a plane in seven minutes, because if it's late, it costs you know, the company money, and it's on your shoulders to get it done. You're moving like you're doing good over there. That's looking nice. Okay, now we're going to If they can't finish cleaning the plane in two minutes, they might cause the airline delays and financial losses. Coming up on Flight Attendant School. Whew, running out of time. I'd rather deal with people than bags because that's tough work. We're going to go to a challenge course. Always keep a smile even though you're, you're crying inside. <laughs> Flight attendant trainees are taking a break from practicing emergency procedures and spending a day at the airport learning about other Frontier employees' jobs. Chris and the cleaning crew only have a couple of minutes to get this plane ready for another flight. Are you going to a bad deal? Yeah. Woo, running out of time. OK. That was a quick seven minute little workout. <laughs> Broke a sweat. Luckily, I didn't find anything too disgusting. Now you gotta feel, huh? Yes. What happened? Yeah, we appreciate you big time. Yeah, we oh, do. Yeah. <laughs> For the first time out, they did an excellent job. They listened good and they followed all instructions. So I think these guys will make good plans. I'm looking forward to working with them in the future. Although his goal is to become a flight attendant, the Walk a Mile program has given William a new perspective on the many other jobs at Frontier. I'm going to bag the plane out for it to take off. It's pretty neat. It's a, it's a different view from up in the plane. William and the other students proudly push the aircraft down the ramp, knowing that their flight has left the gate on time. I think I did well in the walk mile, and everybody else did great. I don't know if we all thought we were going to enjoy it as much as we actually did. As a result of their on-time success, the students have all passed their walk a mile evaluations. The class, everyone passed, so that's cool. Everyone in the class passed, so we're all here and no one's going home yet. There was a huge exhale. Everybody's adrenaline was, you know, everybody's shaking. And it was just overall happy, happy feeling. The students did great. Doing all these jobs, it makes them more well-rounded because, again, they get to see our job versus their job. After getting high marks for her work at the check-in counter and for assisting with the laboratory service, Annie has a greater appreciation for all the jobs at Frontier. I think this experience, along with the other ones I've dealt with today, are definitely going to help me being a flight attendant because you are more sympathetic towards the other employees on the job and you kind of realize more what they do because a lot of people stereotype the positions and think, oh, you know, like flight attendants, we're just servers in the sky or, oh, they just do that. But, I mean, there's a lot more to it and they have to know more and all day today I've realized that. So. But, yeah, thank you so much. <laughs> but thank you, Eddie. I wouldn't choose anything other than being a flight attendant because the flight attendants have it pretty easy. Dealing with passengers is way by far easier than bags. And some people say I'd rather deal with bags than passengers. I'm the other way around. I'd rather deal with people than bags because that's tough work. As William gets closer to becoming a flight attendant, only one thing stands in his way. 
I'm excited about being a flight attendant with Frontier, however, I'm terrified of heights. And with an office at 35,000 feet, this could be a problem. In an effort to become more confident during emergencies, the students are heading to the Rocky Mountains to a physical challenge course which will help train them to keep cool under duress. Penguin Park is a great place for not only the students but the instructors to get a challenge, deal with it, because definitely there will be challenges on the plane and they need to be prepared for them. They need to have the confidence that not only have they seen this before in training, but that they can work through it with their fellow crew members. Yeah. All right, guys. We ready to go? Yes. Check. How's it going? Right. Welcome to Finger yeah. Park. Stretch out those legs. We are super excited, and I hope you are, to have you here for a day on our challenge course. Guarantee you'll be scared at least twice while you're here. Yeah. Now are we all ready? Yeah. Yes. All right. Pingree Park instructor Pat gets the students started on their first challenge. The first one is called the catwalk. It's right here. You go up the pole, go back along the high catwalk, which is 28 feet high. William and Karen are nervous at the sight of these exercises because they are both afraid of heights. I am terrified, but uh, we need to come across to our passengers uh, in severe turbulence or what have you. That's our job. So uh, always keep a smile, even though you're <laughs> crying inside. The high element, uh, since I'm afraid of heights, I definitely need to. This will be my um, overcoming moment, hopefully. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Coming up on Flight Attendant School. Oh, it's windy up here! Good, William! <sighs> this poor man, I can't believe this. The flight attendant trainees and instructors are at a physical challenge course to better prepare them to handle in-flight emergencies. William and Karen both have a fear of heights, and it will be tougher for them to complete the course. Karen has told me that she's afraid of heights. The catwalk will be a great boost of confidence for her by completing that. If you're standing here up there and you can't get started, I, I, I can't, I can't, I can't. Usually I can't means I'm afraid. And at this challenge course, we like to think it's OK to be afraid. You know, guys, I have got to go first, because okay. if I don't go, I will never go. Yeah. I'll go second. Yeah, I feel like I'm going to vomit. <laughs> okay, my dad's up there somewhere. Help me, Dad. I know, I'll talk to you the whole time, I promise. OK, Miss Karen, you're officially on belay. Climbing. Climb on. Go on up. Go, Karen. All right, Karen. <laughs> I want to be an airborne ranger. Shut up, Frank. <laughs> That's good, Karen. Nice job. Doing good. good job. That's the way. All right. Karen's doing great here. She revealed that heights are not a good thing for her, so I'm really proud of her for being the first one out there to do it. Right, you got it. You got it. Oh, Lord. <laughs> All right. Looking it's really windy good. up here. One. I did it. Damn it. Good job. <laughs> Good job. Thanks. Good job. That was awesome. Good job. <laughs> Seeing someone take the catwalk, especially Karen, being one of my trainers, so she's supposed to lead me, that encouraged me a lot. You guys have just done some quite difficult high elements out here. Definitely pushed some boundaries. We're going to push you a little bit further. This last element is called the giant swing. Two people will climb up the wall, one on the right, one on the left. From there, you're going to jump off. This is going to be probably the most difficult thing you'll do. William will climb with Katrina to the top of the giant swing. Scared out of my mind. I hate cleaning the gutters at my parents' house, much less this. Go, come on! Come on. Come on. He 
was a little freaked because he's scared of heights more so than most of the rest of us. So, you know, all you could do is try to give him words of encouragement. Well, yeah. Well done. This poor man, if he can make it up, he deserves like a gold medal. I can't win this. Oh, this thing is rocking. Okay, am I done now? No, I'm terrified. You know, once we got to the top of the wall, I did try to help William, tried to tell him it was fine. Just jump, close your eyes. We'll be fine. We can do it. We got this. OK, so here's the deal. Uh -huh. Three, two, one, go. You're stepping out to the right. Three, two, one, go. You're stepping out to the left. Not really. Give me a second. OK, okay. come on, William. Come on over here. Ready? Woo! Yeah, Brooke, you're ready. Woo! All right, go fly. I don't want to. Yes, you do. Yeah, you do. You're invincible. Three, two, one, go! Holy oh, yeah. oh, my God. I was a net case to do that. Right before I jumped, I felt like I'm crazy for jumping off a perfectly good structure. <laughs> we got you! Uh, your face is so funny. <laughs> this showed me that I can conquer my fears and any challenge that I have, as long as I put my mind to it and go at it full force. I think it was great for William to see another, an instructor, Karen, get up on that pole and walk that, uh, that balance beam. And with the huge fear of heights that Karen has to accomplish those, that was great for her. And I think that was a positive role model for William as well. Thank you. As instructors at SUS, we've been bonding a lot through this experience. I'm proud of our class, and I'm especially proud of the teamwork that I saw. on the next episode of Flight Attendant School. This is called Frontier's Amazing Race. We're gonna fire off some smoke and do an evac and scare them and they start crying. And... William, William has a heart condition and I think that it just acted up. You all right? No.